Hi, welcome to Inside the Moms Club, where being a mom is the coolest place to be. Here in the Moms Club, we believe that what embarrasses you now will make a great story later. And let's face it, you don't laugh sometimes, you're going to cry. Join us in having a good laugh together. I'm Monica Samuels. You are now inside the Moms Club, your private destination for all things mom. Welcome, moms. Welcome to Inside the Moms Club. I'm Monica Samuels, and I'm here with my co-host today, Julie Orkin. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Julie. So it's an exciting time. It's We're kind of in the middle of the holiday season, and it's that time of year when I have to master my famous reheating instructions. Yes. Because um, I don't cook, sadly. And guess what, Monica? Wow. I don't either. I know. Neither one of this us is cook, sad. This is really but sad. But we love to eat. Yes. I mean, I know I do. <laughs> Clearly uh, I do. Yeah. But I think that they need to have a, like a class or a book or an <laughs> article or something about how to properly reheat all your your like your, your Thanksgiving leftovers. feast or your, well, even for the actual meal. Right. Because I'm standing there with all these instructions. In fact, mm-hmm. we had a great meal. But the Thanksgiving this year, they sent us something the day after that said, oh, sorry, we sent you the wrong instructions. And I'm like, well, of course. <laughs> that explains why my, my turkey was cold. I, I mean, they, they mistyped. I, I, they, th- I don't think they understand how stressful it is for you and I, who people like do us, not cook. People like us, And yes. if you send me the wrong instructions, it, it's, it's, well, it's just stressful. I knew when it said... 250 degrees nobody right. hates things nobody, up at 250 nobody does de- that. even i know that i mean i'm terrible at this yeah. but yeah so i told my mother it's like i think it's 350 and i was right well but we had to mess around oh it was and then just to get the right sequence so you know you're not because what happens with me is everyone's sitting there and they've got heated meat with cold mashed potatoes because we didn't quite I, figure I mean. that out and so yeah, let it's, me tell you what I do when that happens. I take myself back to that day, that amazing meal. When something's lukewarm afterwards, you're like, I'm just gonna envision it in my head, how good this is really gonna be. And I have a favorite. What's your favorite? Oh my God. So I have a cousin who can cook and she makes a wild stuffing. It's not your regular stuffing. It's got nuts and cranberries and I mean from scratch is what i have to say and i couldn't get i can't get enough of it so no one gets leftovers at my house from that i just i I just tell everybody we ran out but we really (laughs) it's in my refrigerator (laughs) good thinking yeah listen it's my house yeah yeah yeah. well my favorite see my mother's a good cook which is really kind of what happened to me and not my sisters well okay there's three of us i can't cook to save my life and my youngest sister cannot cook to save her life. Well, my middle one, she can kind of cook she's something. Right. She's pretty good. Yeah. But but that's because my mother was such a great cook and she didn't spend the time. Well, we were kind of doing other things, too. It's not like we asked mm-hmm. either. But to teach us to do it, we just relied on these amazing meals that she made. So for Thanksgiving, she makes a great sweet potato casserole. Ooh, I yes. mean, it tastes like dessert. Yeah. It is so delicious. Well, you love marshmallows. I love marshmallows. I love them. Every time we come to L.A., we buy marshmallows. We act like they don't make them in Texas. Yeah. In fact, this morning, what did we have for breakfast? Peppermint marshmallows. marshmallows. Now, I... Sadly, I looked at the ingredients on the back, and cane sugar is the number one. I should have known that, but... Um, that, but yes, that's okay I do. I do love marshmallows. In fact, I gave marshmallows to my dogs, thinking that that was a way to get them to... Monica, you cannot give marshmallows to dogs. No, you cannot. I was told by the vet, don't do that ever again. But but anyway. Oh, good Um, Lord. All right. Bottom line is here, we love food and we love to eat. And what's awesome today is we have a great, great guest. She is known as Ms. Audrey, the owner of Ms. Audrey's Southern Kitchen and Catering in Gulfport, Mississippi. Yeah. They Ooh. offer Southern comfort food, which and she focuses in her job on giving back to her community. And this is the 
kudos to her. We should have like a special award music and everything going. She won the grand prize at the 2022 mm. Gumbo Fest in Gulfport. Woo! Woo! That is awesome. Yeah. Welcome, Audrey Duncan, Ms. Audrey. Welcome to the Moms Club. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. Well, we are so excited that you're here. And I, like we just said, we're neither one of us cook. In fact, in my, I'm embarrassed. I don't know if you can see the logo. The logo for our show is based on true yes. events. And so you see there's a burning There's pan. a burning pot. That, yes, yeah. a, that's me. That's how I cook. I mean, everything burns or it doesn't get cooked <laughs> enough or whatever. So I will not say that I can cook at all, but I can sure can eat. And I love great food. And it sounds like you are the queen of cooking in mm-hmm. Gulfport, and you've won an amazing award. So... Tell us a little bit about your restaurants. Let's start there so everybody that's coming through Gulfport can get a good meal when they when they stop through. Yeah. Well, I am Ms. Audrey with Ms. Audrey's Southern Kitchen and Catering, mm. and we specialize in Southern cuisines. What happened um, in 2001, I um, can't move here to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and I started working for the Courtyard Marriott. And while working there, I'm coming from Natchez, Mississippi, which is originally my home. Uh-huh. And when I came to Gulfport, I was looking for a good serving of just plain old rice and gravy, what I grew up on. When I grew up, uh, when mom couldn't have meat, she would make that long, good seasoned gravy and a, a pound of rice, and it, we, it would suffice it for us to to get full off of. Well, I was looking for that. Yeah. And I couldn't find that. So I started searching out and looked, searched several restaurants. Nobody had rice and gravy. Nobody had a good true gravy. So I was working at the Courtyard Marriott for nine years. And in the midst of me there, um, I started introducing something different to the Marriott because they had just this little continental breakfast. Uh, if we did a lunch, it was for like a special function, but nothing still where you could get good Southern cuisines. My motto is, if I go to China, I want the best Chinese food there is. <laughs> so if you go down South, you want the best Southern cooking there is. Uh, amen, so, amen to there that. There wasn't no avail. Yes, and here we on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, you eat so many shrimps and catfish and oysters, you know, it's only so much of that you can take. But I was looking for good vegetables, collard greens, butter beans and okra, mm. as I say, the rice and gravy, mashed potatoes and gravy, fried chicken. So the Marriott allowed me to turn their little small buffet into a southern buffet. Wow. And let me tell you, ladies, <laughs> when I started yes. cooking up those gravies and rice, I wasn't the only one looking for rice and gravy. Everybody on the coast was. Right. You weren't so alone. We started yeah. yeah. Small, small kitchen, yes. So we had a few people the first week. Well, those people told somebody else. So the next thing you know, we had to bring in stanchions to rope it out for people that was in line mm-hmm. trying to get those good old Southern cooking. Wow. So after years at the Marriott and I said, well, yeah, if you can take this food and beverage uh, uh, income from $675,000 a year to 1.2 million with less than a year and a half, I think I can do this for myself. I mean, drop the mic. Well, that is, I, I don't even know what to say. Wow. I feel like I just went to church, Audrey. Wow, wow. That was amazing. That is amazing. And, 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 and that's just the way, it, hey, that's just the way it was, Julie. I felt like that too. So I decided to step out on my own. Oh my goodness. And You're an inspiration. Yes. And wow. everybody from that Marriott that came through to stay like once a year, Every six months, whether it be military, people from out of town just visited, where they always knew if they came back to the Marriott, they were looking for Miss 
argue with those Southern cuisine. Yeah, let's be clear. They weren't looking for the Marriott. No. They were like, where is Miss Audrey? <laughs> Um, I have a question for you. Exactly. It's my understanding yes. that everything you do is super fresh, that we don't we're looking for good vegetables. It's not like my house. There are cans in my house, um, but it's no. made from scratch. And I know you learned that from somewhere. I want to hear about Miss yeah, Bessie what's the story. Tell How me about your mama. My mom, my mom, as I told you earlier, we are originally from Natchez, Mississippi. Which I'm familiar. And my mother, um, she grew up there in Natchez, Mississippi. She started cooking for a lot of the different antebellum homes and yes. different people's kitchens. So she had her brothers to build me a little step stool with some two by fours. <laughs> and so I had to get up there beside my mother and assist her in cooking. So that's where all my cooking skills came from because it wasn't something that she just did just for a living. It had to come from within. Yeah. There's a difference in a cook and a chef. Yes. A yes. cook's going to cook because she has that passion to do so. Mm -hmm. A chef going to do because he's going in for salary. Oh. So what I prepare for my customers, I'll sit down and eat that myself and with them. So my mother instilled in me, if you're going to do it, do it as if you were preparing it for yourself. Oh, that's great. And that's what I did. That, wow. that is great. So when you moved on to start your restaurant, did the Marriott, I mean, were they like begging you not to leave i would imagine that was a big thing for for marriott how did you where's your restaurant in relation well, to the marriott that you would that started it all we kind of like around the corner or where well, are you located since, since, actually we may be about three miles from each other oh okay so they don't have no southern buffet anymore i bet they don't <laughs> now you know, they still send the customers they send those customers to Miss Audrey's. Well, that's, yeah, they, as well they so should. So all the different organizations that come for training and different stuff at the Marriott, well, they instruct them, if you want some good Southern cooking, because people come there and they were like, okay, well, we've had enough of shrimps. Where can you find some good old soul food? Yes. Yeah. And then they tell them about Miss Audrey's. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Well, yeah, I bet that was the most uh, probably on TripAdvisor for a while. That was the most popular courtyard in America, and now you're probably <laughs> on TripAdvisor is one of the most popular restaurants in Mississippi. I, I would absolutely guarantee that. I think we need to road trip to Florida Number and one. then go via Gulfport. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we we get you over to we get over job. to the Panhandle of Florida a lot from Texas. So I think we're going to take ourselves a little trip. I mean, Miss Audrey, could we get a reservation? <laughs> yeah, do you make reservations? Or is there a big line? Or how do you... <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry just sitting here. <laughs> I welcome you with open arms. Yo. Thank you. Well, that would... not only do to... You don't just come to Miss Audrey's for the cooking, but it's a lot there you know it's like going to mama's house yeah. yeah so you left me to a really good point and i have to ask you a question so my mother tells me that sharing food is a way of love and um i have a feeling that that might have been the message as well so how, i mean do you do you have children how many children do you have and do you share this gift with them and can they do it like you can do it yes by the grace of God, I've been blessed with three beautiful kids and they love cooking and love the, the enjoyment of food as well as I do. I tell everybody a recipe is a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but a whole lot of love. Oh, that is great. I'm in love with you, Miss Audrey. I think I think I could do that, actually. <laughs> yes, you can. Well, you know what? That's interesting. That's, yeah, my, my grandmother, when she is loved. Yeah. yeah. Well, my grandmother too. When 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 before she passed away, everybody was saying like, "What's your biscuit recipe?" Because you make these amazing biscuits, and she'd say, "Well, you know, you take a a dab of this and a handful of that." And it's like, "What is that?" But that exactly. was always delicious yeah. because and it was made with with a lot yeah. of love. So, do your do your yeah, kids exactly. work with you in the restaurant? Are they part of your restaurant, or is it a family thing? Of or course. 
my oldest my oldest daughter works with me. She's the uh, the head of the front of the restaurant. My my baby daughter, which lives in Connecticut, but every time she, as she posts on Facebook just recently, she came home for Thanksgiving. She turned forty years old, and um, when she came home, she said. It's so wonderful to come home, but I know I got to pick my big girl's shoes on and I got to go to mama's and work. So it's not just coming home. You're going to get in there and get dirty with mom. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what's it like working with your oldest daughter? Does that go real smoothly? Because she just does what mama tells not her to do. all the time. That's okay. right. Yeah, well, that's what I was Thanks wondering. for being honest. <laughs> Thanks for being honest. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not easy all the time because... Coming up and working in several kitchens myself, besides the Marriott, I've been taught that when you come into the Marriott, that's why, remember what I said, the Marriott allowed me eventually mm -hmm. when they seen that the flow was so wonderful for the restaurant, I mean, for the, the hotel, they allowed me to start this little Southern kitchen cooking in there. But I've been taught as I've worked in several kitchens that Whatever goes on and however they do it in that, in that kitchen, that's the way you do it. If you want to do it another way, then you open your own restaurant. And that's what I did. That is, I love that. That is great. Now, I know all your dishes, I'm sure, are delicious. But do you have a couple of favorites? What are, your, what are a couple of your favorite dishes? And how would you, without giving any way too many secrets, because yeah. we don't want you to do that, but... Tell our listeners a little, like, what's the, what's the special sauce in some of these things that make them, you know, stand out a little bit that they might want to just my throw? My number, butter. my number one dish, of course, butter. you got to have butter. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> my three say. favorite uh, uh, and my three highest ranked dishes, I've, I've been not only won the gumbo competition, but I was voted number one in the state of Mississippi for the best macaroni and cheese. Oh, my God. We're getting in the car. <laughs> we got to go. You know what? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. How many, well, how many hours, hours from California? Yeah, we're a little far away right now, but we'll be there. So mac and cheese. So what makes your mac and yes. cheese so special? Mac and cheese. Because of the cheeses that, you know, most people use a little cheddar cheese or American. Well, I use four different cheeses in my mac, in my mac and cheese. Ah, and ooh. of course, the key ingredient is love. Yeah. The gumbo I'm gonna is cry. one of my other top rate dishes. Peach cobbler. <gasps> oh my gosh. You can drive from far and near to get that peach cobbler. And you got to have that little butter floating around the edges of the cobbler with the crust. Yes. Yeah. You got to burn the crust just a little bit. I love that. Oh my. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm getting so hungry just sitting yeah. here. I. This is also delicious. Wow. What's your greatest challenge yeah. of running a restaurant or having your own restaurant, Miss Audrey? Of course, now is in, in good help. Say that again. Good help. Good help. Yes. Good help. Yeah. What's going That's on the with that? Challenge is well, good help. What? Well, what is going on with that? Is, is it, it since the pandemic? Yes, ma'am. And it's not getting better. It's, it's it's pretty much the same as the pandemic. It's not a lot better at all. But I have a a, a little small nest of people that's been working with me uh, probably about 25, 30 years, yeah. even before I came to the coast. Some of the employees that I had previously when I lived in Jackson, Mississippi, they followed me here and they are still with me in the restaurant. Wow, that's a great testament to you as an employer. I mean, that's amazing. Yes. So during the yes. pandemic, or so did it's, you- It's hard did you to find good help. Did you all have to close a little bit? I mean, some some of places had to shut down a little bit because they didn't have enough help for like a day of a week. Or did you keep right on going because you had a good loyal base there? Or? No, I closed for nine months. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And I didn't think I would be able to open back up. But by the grace of God, once I did, God blessed me to mm -hmm. land a contract with the Navy because not only do I just have the restaurant, I do catering, major catering, and I do government contracts. 
So I had to fit the uh, 80% of the Navy ship that came in to help because we have four military bases here on the coast. Yes. Mm -hmm. They came in to assist the military where 80% of them came down with the COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but they had to be fed. So I landed this contract uh, to be able to feed that Navy for six months, three meals a day, 480 people, every meal individualized packed. Wow. You're like a superhero. But, but it was the no savior one in, of my business. Yeah, wow. no one in the Navy is eating this well. I am a Navy brat, and I can tell <laughs> you that the ships are probably lined up because the word is out. Yeah, that's, so, they're pretty lucky that when they get sent to sent the to Gulf, Gulf Port. The Navy base is probably a half a block from my restaurant. Oh, oh okay. I've been to Gulfport. I know exactly where you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, I know the CB some... base. Say that again. The CB base. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you do you sell any of your like? Do you do you have your gumbo available for sale outside of your restaurant or what or and your mac and cheese or any it's like is there a whole line of Ms. Audrey's or is there a line coming that you we mean, could can all Monica and I place an order oh, yeah. today? Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, we sell the gumbo by the gallons. Uh, actually I'm feeding the Navy on Saturday, two hundred and sixty five of them, their Christmas meal. And they're excited. They're they're my best friends in the world. Wow. You know what? Is it too late for it's, us to join the Navy? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I can, can tell get... you this. So walk us through that process. If I mean, I can't even feed three people. So if on, on Saturday, how, how does this all come about and get made? How does this happen? So if you're a Navy brat, Julie, you already <laughs> know military is a last minute operation. Yes, ma'am. Everything happens at the last minute. So you, I have to plan, the, I, I get with them, I plan the menu, I do the ordering for the menu, we come in and we prep. They come in on Saturday morning because they don't, where they're, we're feeding them, they don't have a kitchen. So I have these big old rolling ovens called Camrose. Okay. I load it with their food. They pick it up and they take it and they set it up and they feed them and their families. That's unbelievable. Wow. I, I, I can tell you. You know, I just feel very strongly that Ms. Audrey's food should be all over America, not just in the South. I mean, you're very blessed to have it in Mississippi, but you need to go or you need to go around the entire country. So you need to you need to put it out there. Go go to Shark Tank or go to one of these. Let's see Ms. Audrey's uh, hey, famous but, gumbo everywhere. But Monica, I am so, I'm so glad to be talking to you. Hopefully we'll touch someone else that can take it on further. Oh, that, I mean. Absolutely. It, Listeners out there, we're not kidding around here. <laughs> Ms. Audrey's food sounds amazing. <laughs> and you need if you have the money to help out, if you want to make an investment there and making feeding make all of big, us. Make it big. Make it big. Her heart is big. Her yeah. food is amazing. I mean, I am completely in awe of you. Yeah. Uh, not only as a cook, but as a person. I know that you're a good person and that you spread the love. So, for sure. Yes, I do. I I do so much, um, and and I love to. I'm a big giver, and like I say, I come from humble beginnings. And you, when I was coming up, they used to tell me, hum, being humble was weak. But I found out over the years of my life that being humble means you have a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So I try to spread that. And not only do I do that, I take on a lot of at-risk youth. Yes. And I wow. teach them basic culinary skills. Yes. And once they learn those culinary skills, then if I have a position at Miss Audrey's, I hire them. If not, I give them a letter of recommendation and send them to other places for jobs. I mean, you are giving and these people purpose. Grow. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That you is know, great. I have students um, with fifth grade educations that's now a sous chef 
at casinos. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Well, Ms. Audrey, we at yes. on the Moms Club, we have some moms that will Zoom in and ask questions. And today we're very Please lucky do. to have a Zoomer mom. So welcome, Zoomer mom. Welcome Yay. into the Moms Club. Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh. I'm loving this. Yeah. First of all, I'm laughing my head off that you two are interviewing this power lady in the kitchen and you two like it, literally we're, well yes the, i mean leave it to your friends to bring out well, the weaknesses yeah, th that you have like thank yeah, you zoomer right. mom for pointing out that the two worst cooks in america are interviewing one of the best cooks in america um <laughs> Self-proclaimed so curbside pickup women that you're yeah. interviewing. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're experts at that. You're absolutely right. Well, welcome, like, Zoomer mom, Leslie. Why don't you tell Ms. Audrey a little bit about yourself and and ask her some and questions. And what amazing cook you are. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Brad. I don't know if I'm an amazing cook, but um, uh, no, my name is Leslie here. I'm from Austin, Texas, and I have two kiddos, and um, I could never work with my kids. Um, I love them, <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, I bless you for that. I love at the beginning when you're talking talking about um just your love of food because especially coming off thanksgiving mm. um i would love to hear a little bit and and banter back and forth a little bit about your um your thanksgiving meal because um i can imagine like you know to me thanksgiving is you know it's stressful for some people but for my family my mom and i specifically it's a language of love yes and i i feel like that's probably your scenario so what so i would love like a visual of like what your thanksgiving day looks like in your household you know the chaos and the fun and the love and the and favorite dishes and you know is it all stuff that you make at your restaurant or do you have some things you save for family only mm. Mm -hmm. so leslie um, as I told you earlier, I do a lot of catering and contracting. So at Thanksgiving, that's the one time of the year that I don't cook for my family. Yeah. I um, actually, we fed the community on the 17th of November and we fed 1,324 people a free mm -hmm. meal. And wow. then I also do what's yeah. called holiday packages and they're for Thanksgiving and Christmas as well. So we're surrounded with a lot of military and the hospital is like maybe a half of a block from the restaurant as well. So I do these packages with the, the turkey, the stuff in the mac, the, the collard greens, the rolls, the, you get a choice of cake or pie and for a hundred dollars. Yeah. So on Thanksgiving Eve, everybody picks up their package. So this was my biggest year and, and definitely because of inflation, because there's nowhere in the world that you can get all of that at a grocery store, less on the time to go in and cook it for a hundred dollars. Yeah, no So kidding. we had a line of people to pick up holiday meals. So when I finished that on Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve, <laughs> I don't want to see dressing on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating pizza. <laughs> so, so that's that's when I eat the seafood. On, on that's the right. Day. There you go. There you go. But your kitchen at your at your restaurant must be a little bit. I mean, I can. I just think of. I I kind of envision like every other year I host Thanksgiving and I have. Um, you know, a ton of family that comes in and we've done it for years and, you know, everybody kind of has their thing. And my mom, you know, she has her things that she does and I have my things. And then I've got cousins that come and one of them makes a cream corn casserole. And, you know, the one that can't cook is yes. she makes rolls. And she, doesn't <laughs> do very, she doesn't even do a very good job at that. We, we might have to pull the roll duty from her because, you know, we all want to throw them at each other, but they'd hurt too hard if we yeah. accidentally hit somebody. <laughs> so, so, so uh, you know, but I picture that your world is just kind of so much, especially if it's family, you probably have a lot of these just fun cooking moments. I just, I think cooking, we've said it earlier is cooking is love, you know, I mean, you, yeah. you, um, you really, I mean, I love every other year when I get to do that with my family and it seems like you get to do that just all the time. And I know cooking gets to be a pain because there's plenty of times I go into my kitchen like tonight and I'm just like, eh, yeah. not that motivated to cook, yeah. Yeah. you know, nobody knows, nobody knows what goes on behind the scene of cooking. And, and this is exactly there, why you know? I don't get involved. It sounds it's one thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot to it, but I do I do look forward to the times when I can get my family together 
and which is quite often, and we just eat, you know. And I, I pull out. I don't have to wait till Thanksgiving. On a Sunday when I get a chance, yes. I cook a big meal and just, not just my family, I invite, in, my house is an open house. Everybody oh. comes and eat, drink, and be merry. Oh, Monica, so, did you hear that? I was going to say, would you notice if we oh. just sneak, you know. Yeah, would you notice? Where, where do you live? No. <laughs> <laughs> After the show, we'll get your address. Come on. Uh, I would so love that. you have a day? I'm going to feed you. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be, the we'll be is there. Closed? Like, is is it is your restaurant closed on Sunday so that you've got some time? No, I'm us, I'm usually closed on Saturdays and Sundays, but that's my big catering days. So right now, it'll probably be sometime in end of January before I get a day off. Oh Lord! Wow. Okay, that is busy. Um, that's I a just, labor of love, ma'am. I just want to say that. Hours. At Thanksgiving, I'm the one that is asked to make the rolls. And they're very good, actually. <laughs> and the cranberry uh, sauce, because I know how to open the can. So I'm really good at that. So I don't fail miserably, Miss Audrey. Please yeah. provide what is a, now make it easy, recipe that I can, you know, teach my young children. What's a good An aspiring what's a good one? Chef, a cook. The macaroni and cheese. Okay. I love it. I would love it too. Back. Oh, oh, and we have a we have a picture of it. We have it a right picture of it here, and that is very tempting for me. Yes. So that's pretty simple. Rest so like ingredients, and for a, a young child, they can put that together pretty easily. Of course, and 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 it's fun to them, and then that not only is it fun, but they love it. And have you done a cookbook, Miss Audrey? I'm working on right now, the end of next year, I'm supposed to complete. It's called Miss Audrey's Kitchen Bible. Oh, oh, wow. Yes. Yes. I say we, amen to that. We will, we will be purchasing absolutely. that. I promise you that. Absolutely. So. Oh, this is this yes. has been amazing. And we will definitely want to get over to Gulfport. Have you ever thought of opening a satellite restaurant in maybe um, Austin, Texas, Des Austin, Texas, or, <laughs> or Destin, Florida, Panama City, that area, maybe? Because make it very convenient for us. You'll be surprised of how many people have asked me to to come different places. But like I say, after the pandemic, we're yeah. finding the staff. You got to have people that you can trust, and they have to do it Miss Audrey's way. Yeah, that's right. If it's not broke, don't fix it. That's yeah, right. Oh, that's true. Well, and yes, it, and it sounds like you know, you're... they have they have a thing called uh, Audrey. Have you heard about Gold Belly? Gold Belly is a. Um, oh yeah. Yes. I... Do y'all use that? No, we don't. That's becoming super popular for these types of restaurants like yours that are niche and that people just can't you know they can't get enough all over the country. Um, that gold yes. belly does, does yes. a lot of that. That's so actually, yeah, that's a great idea. Actually, so gold belly, my husband, because of course all we do is order food, we don't really make it. Gold belly takes some of the best restaurants in America. And so you can go online and you can order from some of the best places in America. And so we have found, like I, we discovered a, a cake that we absolutely love. It's from, it's from South Carolina. It's a caramel cake, and so we order wow. a caramel cake from South Carolina. If your, you know, if your food ships and travels well, you might want to take a look at Gold Belly or talk to them because you are. I think you. I'm not that you're not busy enough. I mean, between the I Navy, mean, really, and everything like, else. when is she supposed to do that? Three but to yeah, I think, no, I'm just kidding. I think that's. What a if great you're record. inside the Moms Club, Moms, we're all your marketing help here. We got all sorts yeah. of ideas. We can solve all the problems. That's here. what the Moms Club does. Yeah, we help each other. So <laughs> yeah. I think you should definitely look into that. That's, that's a great that's idea, what Leslie. I'm talking about. I love it. So yeah. I love the Moms Club. This is this is a great thing. I love this name, Miss Audrey. Speaking of being a mom, I have a quick question for you. First of all. I want to know what you do to take care of yourself, okay? And I also yeah. want to know what you do to relax. I don't know that you do that, <laughs> but and what do you? What's the one thing you teach? That this is three. Sorry, I lied. <laughs> and what do you do to teach your? What do you teach your children? What's the one thing? And it's I'm not talking about cooking. I want to know like what's the one thing that you pass on to your children um, that that you know they hear. They may not acknowledge, but you know they hear it. 
I'm so glad that you asked me that. Um, actually, it's not a lot of things that I do to to pamper myself or to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised with um, four sisters and three bro brothers. Unfortunately, right after COVID, uh, within uh, two years, I lost all my sisters. Oh, mm. so I'm the only living girl that's left. I am so sorry. So it's been challenging for me. And I, one thing that I instill in my kids is whatever you see forth and you want to do in life, give it your all. Because if someone had told me two or three years ago that here today, eight years, a single female is still running a restaurant, I, I wouldn't believe it. Yeah. But it came out of hard work and determination. So I instill that in them that you can do whatever you want to do if you want to do it bad enough. Oh, that is that that's, is that's life lessons. Great, right there. great advice. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ms. Audrey, well, first of all, thank you so much, Leslie, our Zoomer mom. Thanks for joining us today and you giving a great thank question you, and a great suggestion. And Ms. Audrey, where can where can we find you on social media and where do people find you in Gulfport, Mississippi? As we're traveling through, where's your restaurant? Uh, be careful, don't give them your home address. No, 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 no. Hold on, I got a pen. No, the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Watch out. <laughs> yeah, the, the home That's address is for. Me. Yeah, the home address is for after the show for me and the rest for Julie and I. No, you where's can, the restaurant? You, you can and, visit my. Yeah, you can visit my website at Miss Audrey's M S. As I said, single mom, M S Gulfport. Dot com, Miss Audrey's Gulfport dot com. Okay. And I'm located at 1526 Mills Avenue in Gulfport, Mississippi. Well, that is great. Well, we will expect all of our listeners and us, as, um, especially us, well, we're on our way, uh, to, to visit your restaurant. And thank you so much for being on the show today. We really... I mean, Monica, I have a very important question. What? What is the prize... Um, for the grand prize oh, yeah. what did, for winning, what did you um, win? You know the 2002 best gumbo recipe. 2022. Oh, excuse just... me. Sorry, my daughter was born then. <laughs> 2022. What is yeah, the what grand did they give prize? Me? Two thousand dollars. Wow. Woo. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you. As far as I'm concerned, and, it should have it should have been one million dollars. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's how I feel. Yeah. No. It was, and then not only that, the the grand prize was I won a lot of friends, <laughs> a lot of media, and a great time. That it, is the best prize. I mean, of all. you're killing me in the best way, Miss Audrey. And, it, and I mean. It has, been, has a been, amazing it has been a pleasure. prize for us to have you on our show. We are so thankful that you joined us today. And I don't even... Thank you so much for having me. And I, I feel like I've met three new friends. Well, you Love have. Guys and be blessed. Yeah, well, you too. absolutely have. I'm going to go out and spread the love nice. that you gave us today. Absolutely. We're very inspired. So thank you so much for, you. for being on our show today. Thank you. And all you moms out there, uh, catch us on our Instagram page at Inside the Moms Club or our website, Inside the Moms Club. We also are very excited that we are going to be giving away some fabulous prizes, some great items, including, we would hope, maybe a gallon of gumbo, prize-winning gumbo, <laughs> um, to, to some lucky mom out there. So check us out on Instagram and Inside the Moms Club. Well, again, our time has gone by so quickly. I did sorry that we have to say goodbye today but we'll be back next time with celebrities and extraordinary moms just like you we know your me time is precious and valuable thank you so much for spending it with us we'll see you next time inside the moms club